Hey all, welcome back uh, to Tuesday Talks, uh, a show that Dave and I do every other Tuesday live on twitch.tv slash the XP Guild. Uh, catch it on YouTube uh, every Tuesday though. Uh, ours today will be going up live in a little bit here, but uh, until then, join us for this. Um, so today we we're going to talk about Candela Obscura. Uh, the new rules came out recently, uh, just like the quick start stuff. This is part of Critical Role's Illuminated Worlds uh, system that they're working on. Uh, I know we'll see more of that Gen Con, but you can also watch it on uh, Critical Role's channel. Uh, they did a game last Thursday live yep. for everyone to watch. So um, we thought we'd go over it a little bit, just talk about a little bit of the mechanics our thoughts on it, um, you know, what sort of games this system generally is going to lend itself to, um, maybe compare it to some other things, and yeah, touch base on this a little bit. Yeah, if you're ever familiar with Blades in the Dark and uh, Powered by the Apocalypse and some of the other, like, dice D6 rules and stuff like that, um, you're going to pick up a very familiar vibe off of it i would say um and uh, which is good i mean because it's something uh that is uh not alien and unusual and uh, will take a lot of time learning i mean it, it's got some bits and pieces to it that you have to learn but overall once you get the hang of those little bits and pieces it's a fairly simple game system light on rules and uh lends itself to uh Heavy role play. Yeah. Yeah, so the bonus here is like it is a fairly simple system to kind of get to grips with. It's something you probably hand someone a character sheet, um, explain the basics of it, and by the time you're done playing one session, you're in there. Um, it's very like yeah, Call of Cthulhu esque or whatever, where um, your investigators. You're a little bit more than like Call of Cthulhu because that's kind of like the average Joe who just like runs into this crazy thing. <laughs> like this particular setup of it is that you are actually someone who's something special and uh, you do have a chance of success. Uh, <laughs> where Call of Cthulhu, you almost don't. Um, but yeah, basic d6 system so that's another thing you don't have to go out and buy any special dice if you don't i mean most of us who are gamers are gonna own most of the crazy dice uh but here you just need uh these simple little d6s and yep. uh that's all you really need uh two colors uh and that's that's it because you can get uh, a couple different options here as you play and it is a, unlike um, Powered by the Apocalypse, um, it is not just a single, you just need two dice. It is it is kind of a dice pool system, but not as, not as insane as say like Shadowrun <laughs> where you need, or White Wolf where you need like a handful of dice. Um, but yeah. uh, you'll, you'll, need, you'll need a select amount and as well as you'll need a special dice, but it's not like, like, weird unusual just just get a different colored dice to uh for that special dice so yeah so probably about six or so uh d6 with probably one uh, that's a different color that's all that you really need um so there's different roles in the game that you can kind of take up and different specialties like your class slash subclass sort of thing um the particular one we have up here is the slink, which would be like something equivalent to like a rogue type character with the specialty of being a criminal. Um, that's going to affect your starting action economy. Um, so the basics of it is if you're looking at this, the sheet, right? And you're looking, there's one of the circles is like bigger and bolder on there and that means that you're starting um like so your move and strike control those all you get one boulder circle 
and that would mean you'd have one die in that dice pool traditionally with it right um ones like hide down there you get two dice for that dice pool and it's pretty simple you say i'm gonna go do this the dm will say give me a hide roll let's say so you're looking at that you get two dice and actually hides kind of special because it has that diamond filled in which means it's a gilded action and yep. that allows you to replenish uh the drives which is essentially like a dice pool that you can spend to increase your chance of success um so if you look at the cunning section there are six like uh six of the max things filled in there well you start the the game with all those full and then you can start spending those to say, I really want to succeed. I really want to hide really well. So I'm going to spend one to add a die to my die pool. And then because hide is a gilded action, which just kind of really means it's something your class wants to do. Like you're a rogue, so you want to be able to hide really well. Um, and if you roll and use the gilded action die, the special color die then that means that you would gain one of your drives back um success is pretty simple on one to three you fail four up you succeed but on a four or five it's like you succeed with some sort of complication the dm gets to throw it in but uh, good partial success yeah. so yeah 50 50 you you actually succeed in what you were trying to do and one in six you succeed like completely without any complications um yeah if you roll multiple sixes when you're rolling that's considered a critical success and you get some sort of boon item something that's going to help you out yeah. down the road um so fairly simple like that's kind of the gameplay and the idea too is you're not rolling for everything. No. Like it's it's emphasis on role play, which is really cool. Um, so also know that you want a group that's going to be good at that. You know, like mm -hmm. you yeah, get imp imp yeah, go imp ahead. yeah uh, improv and uh just kind of knowing, uh, you know, where to jump in, where to not to jump in at, and uh, kind of figuring out stuff on your own, and then uh, ultimately the storyteller um, will uh, tell you uh, when you need to make a roll and when not to make a roll. Um, and that's another thing is um, doing it a certain way will, will help you out um, in the long run. So. I mean, yeah, so I think I think the point too here is like, A, you want a group that is going to be a good well, not necessarily even necessarily good at role playing, but like that aren't just hack and slash. Like anyone can yeah. play this. You don't have to be like a star role player. It's just some people have more fun when they're you know, rolling lots of dice and killing lots of things. And cool. some people really enjoy the interaction between other party members that kind of the long run of it the actual role play side of the role playing game um and that this is going to suit that sort of group a little bit better uh now anyone i think will be good to go on this um you do also want to remember just like i think you should in D D or anything else that you play is know your party and know what they're good at and allow them to succeed at that yeah so because there's gilded actions because there's a dice pool system there are limited resource sort of things and you want to allow the people who are good at things to attempt to succeed at them especially uh gilded action ones because that's going to replenish your drives, which gives you more chances to use this dice pool. Um, you can also share your drives to help other party members. So it kind of behooves nice. you to say, you're the, you're the slink. I'm going to let you hide 
over here and be the lookout for whatever. Well, now you're giving that rogue style. Now you're giving this character, the slink, the chance to, you know, duck behind cover. So that's using the hide action more than likely, right? And they're going to get at least the two dice and maybe they'll add more to it. One of them will be gilded. So you can add your drives back in. Kind of encourage you to spend some of your drives and encourages you to make actions that would fit your character. Yeah. And if you're familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, it's, it's exactly like the help action. Only that there's like rules to it and it's not just, well, I'll just do it anyway, you know. So, um, gives them something to uh, base everything on. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I honestly, I think like in Dungeons & Dragons, and I should be cracking down more on that in my game, is I think that like there should be something that the person needs to do to give the help or at least they have to be able to help in some way yeah like not just oh i'm gonna help them well it's okay how do you help them you know <laughs> um so this is gonna encourage that too um i yeah i don't know it's pretty simple pretty straightforward system which i think is really awesome uh i can't wait to see more of it yeah um so they have like, there's ways that like, if you fail, you can take some sort of damage or stress to your system. And that's what the marks are if you're looking at this. Um, and there's the, the body, which is physical, the brain, which is like psychological Mental. and bleed yeah. is magical. Um, and so depending on how you take the damage, you'd fill in boxes. If you fill in three, you get a scar. And if you take a scar, you're out until they can figure out a way to get you back in, back up and running. They perform some actions or whatever or that scene's over. Uh, they take you somewhere to get you healed. Um, and, and then if you I, get three, you're dead. Yeah. So and I, and 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 it's really cool because you actually get to put in the type of scar you get. So yeah. I mean, and what makes sense to the game, whether you know. You get your leg cut off or, you know, you take some kind of brain trauma from, like, falling from a skyscraper or something. Or, you know, blast it by some kind of unearthly tentacle or something, you know. So, um... And yeah, the then you can move around your actions, like, what you're good at a little bit because of the scar so it yeah. alters you and that's that's kind of a fun way to be like okay well you know maybe uh i lost an arm so i'm not very good at strike but mm -hmm. now i'm really good at i don't know something else uh, uh, yeah survey okay. because yeah. i know to look out for that danger now or whatever yeah you know yeah um, you, 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 uh, it, it makes it really cool to where it's in your hands of when you got physical damage and be able to manipulate the character then just go oh, i just lose hit points that's all da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you know so um and it, and it gives more depth to your character thus uh enhancing the role play ability of it which that's and what i think I like. the, yeah and i think depending on like how long you're playing or whatever you know, on a one shot, maybe it's not as big of a deal, but if you're like, these are kind of suited for these like mini episodes sort of things. Yeah. And so it definitely, I think, would give you a fear if mm -hmm. you start taking marks, you know, or you start getting a scar and then you're like, uh oh, now if I <laughs> take more marks or to get more scars, um, will I survive this? Do I have yeah. to have another character ready in the way? <laughs> Available. Lead? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I mean it, it. It's it's gonna definitely be neat as uh, because if you notice on the character sheet, they've got under specialties. Um, they they only give you two uh, with each one, and then the rest of them are available in the full game. It's gonna be interesting to see what those are that they're coming out with and what's in the game of uh, because Slink right now you're just a scout. But uh, who knows uh, whether you're, you know, a cut, cut, 
purse or you know uh, something else even um, but uh, and each of those uh, roles and specialties uh, is additional help helps to your character so they give you certain stuff whether it be you know like leverage on a successful read roll you may ask the GM what your target truly wants on any sway rolls you may use you you make using this information also add your current cutting resistance yeah um so some cool little differentiation there um it kind of encourages you i think to have a diversified group so you're not all just one style mm -hmm. um Again, right? You want people to roll different things. You want someone who's good at striking. You want someone who's good at, you know, surveying. Someone that, you know, you want those people with different gilded actions so they can be taking those actions and you can be rolling more die and replenishing your pool. Um, so encourages that work together, encourages that uh, kind of mix of group dynamics and. I don't know. I think I think it could be a lot of fun. Um, I think so too. I think any sort of system where you are, or game style where you want to have a heavy like investigation aspect, um, the cosmic horror sort of thing, the you know straight out horror. Um, this you can have a lot of fun. I think with this system and diversify it like this particular one candle obscura you follow like your group of investigators uh in this organization the candela obscura organization and you're kind of given a mission based on some sort of inciting element that happened that causes you to be sent here to look into things um we'll see what yeah. illuminator worlds as a whole gets yeah you know yeah. shifted around to um, I think it's kind of designed to have a like this is the core behind it that we can already mm -hmm. see in here the marks the the different actions the you know roles and then the roles would be different and the feelings would be different and or maybe even depending on the setting maybe the brain bleed body may change a little bit around yeah. uh, in the long run. And definitely the uh, equipment, the gear as well. You know, and it's not like uh, you get a, you know, you get a select amount of gear that you can choose from and stuff like that, which is neat. Instead of like just a big list of stuff that you get to choose from with gold. But yeah, um, it's going to be neat to see how that plays out as well as, you know, the other rules uh, involved, uh, like the resistances and uh, experience points and uh, how you get to manipulate all that stuff as you advance and level so you kind of get experience by doing things that you want to want oh, to yeah. do right so like uh if you look at the bottom of the sheet the illuminated keys it has some like actions down do something illegal make a deal stand up to authority well if you do that then you've like at least one of those you can kind of earn experience for yourself and for the party and then if the party all can do their actions so again encouraging everyone in the party to get their chance to do what they want to do then you earn more points in like this little circle of completion sort of thing so when you reach a certain point on that circle you get to like basically level up by gaining oh, yeah. either actions, more drive, uh, you know, things like that. Um, if you complete the whole thing, then other resources are replenished because there are party wide resources that you share, which can fix your marks, replenish your drives, all these things that are going to help in the long run. So it's a really awesome little system of you succeed as a group you probably fail hard as a group <laughs> yeah. um, so work together you know and that's what role playing should be anyways yeah. as far as I'm concerned you know like and uh, you, with the go ahead 
Uh, I was going to say, we've all played with those people that want to have the spotlight on themselves the whole uh, time. Definitely. Definitely. That's going to cause this sort of game to fail hard. Yeah. If they're like, I'm going to do this action. Or, I mean, honestly, it might just mean that person will be out of the game really quick because <laughs> they don't want to do all the actions. They have a better chance of failing and getting marks and scars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, adds, share adds, the wealth. Adds up quickly. And, you know, um, the cool thing... Uh, uh, Critical Role has uh, not only dropped this, uh, I guess, uh, quick start rule set um, on their site, um, but uh, we're not going to get off into that because we want you to explore that, which is really neat. Uh, it gives you the uh, backstory and all the little uh, tidbits of the Candela Obscura um, world setting. As well as what's really, really neat, which love to death, as always, is that uh, they included an adventure with this uh, quick start rule set. So, um, we may actually uh, run that. Um, me and Bill's got to talk about it, but uh, and try yeah. to put something together. But uh, I, I think we might uh, run a mini series with that uh, here soon. So. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Um, so if you want to check that out, check out these rules for yourself. Uh, of course, you can watch Critical Role playing it when they stream yep. this game next. But go to DarringtonPress.com slash Candela. Uh, I put it in chat if you're here on Twitch. And I will do my best to remember to put that into the uh, YouTube description and everything uh, for people to check it out. We're not sponsored, of course. At all. They don't even know we exist, <laughs> yeah. but um, it's a cool little system. So check it, it out. I think it's it fun. Uh, I like the D6 mechanics. I think it kind of makes a very simple, light, quick game that you can kind of throw together. Uh, and you probably could even, depending on your GM mind, just kind of throw a game together without really having a ton of prep on this because you just need a setup. Yeah. To start with, you know, at least the first one. If you're all sitting around with your friends, you're like, uh, well, how about we try a game? Well, this one could be a quick one. You could just go, okay, let's do this. Let's say uh, there was a break in at a museum and something was stolen. Yeah. Go. And then from there, you're just like, all right, well, uh, okay, we're going to be these investigators. We're going to go see what it is. And then after that session you can then go okay so what was really stolen why was it stolen like you know you come up with all that stuff in the end and and what's really cool i going off just that idea that bill had once they actually come out with the full rule set and stuff like that you could literally take this criminal or the slink right here and uh have a party of just slinks and they all doing something different and whatnot, and one's a scout and one something else and one something else, you know. So, so you'd have your own very own bank robbers or museum robbers or whatever. So, it's gonna be interesting to see how this all plays out in the end. So, I'm excited. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to seeing both the systems that they're working on, the Dagger Heart, uh, uh, yeah. which is gonna be a little bit more i think of like a d20 d20 D and d like equivalent style thing um which is cool then that makes a lot of sense this one i think is gonna be a really cool little like filler uh game system that you can maybe use in between campaigns of other things or just run series of these to tell either bigger stories or series of these just to kind of incorporate your uh, party into this kind of larger world and uh, see how things go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 